Hey, welcome to a bonus lesson for our Among Us tutorial series. In this lesson, we're going to be doing the same thing that we did in the previous lesson, but we're going to be using the Universal Render Pipeline and the new 2D Lighting System. The new 2D Lighting System is really great because it's more precise and more optimized as what we did in the previous lesson. However, the only downsides to it are one, it's still listed as experimental and I'm always hesitant to do any videos on something that's experimental in case it changes in the future. And two, there's no real way that I know of for masking out player objects like we did in the previous video aside from making the shadows completely black but then doing that gets rid of all the other detail of your environment. And so once again, this is an optional bonus lesson for those of you that want to use the new 2D lighting system from the Universal Render Pipeline. And it's for those of you who are only here to learn about the new 2D lighting system. But if you're not planning on using the Universal Pipeline for the rest of this tutorial series, then go ahead and skip on to the next lesson. Now first off, let me show you our project with the new 2D lighting system from the Universal Render Pipeline. Now as you can tell, we can get a similar lighting effect as we created in the previous video, only this system is much more precise and optimized. The only downside to this system, as far as I know with regards to our Among Us game, is that there's no real way to mask out the players that are hiding in the shadows without amping up the shadow intensity to 100. But then that hides all the other details of our environment in the shadow as well. Unless there's something here that I'm missing. And so if you know the answer on how to hide certain objects in the shadows while not hiding other objects, let me know in the comments below. Now let me show you how to add this other lighting system to our project. Now the first thing that we need to do if you already went through the previous lesson is to revert our scene back to the way it was. And so going through the hierarchy, I'm gonna delete my second camera and we'll set the culling mask on our first camera to everything. We can then select our light mask object and just delete it from our scene and as well our second or dark map. And the last change that we need to make to our hierarchy is on our player object and that is we want to remove our light caster script because you won't need it if you're using this new lighting system. And we'll make sure that we apply these changes to our prefab. And I believe that's all the changes that we made in our previous lesson. The next thing that we need to do for this lesson is add in the universal render pipeline. And so we'll go over to the package manager and we'll change the drop down menu to be Unity Registry. We can then scroll down to Universal RP. And the reason why we're using the Universal RP instead of the High Definition RP is because our game is only 2D, it's pretty simple, and we still want it to be able to run on mobile devices. And so with this package selected, you'll want to click Install, which will take a few seconds to install. Once this package is installed, we first need to set up our render pipeline. You'll first need to create a pipeline asset, and I've done this within my Materials folder. So you can right click in your project window, go up to Create, then Rendering, Universal Render Pipeline, and then Pipeline Asset. And when you create this asset, it'll probably give you two assets. The second is a forward renderer, which we actually don't need because we're going to be doing 2D. So if you want, you can just delete this from your project window. And then we'll create a 2D renderer by right clicking in our project window, going up to Create, Rendering, Universal Pipeline, and then 2D Renderer which is experimental. With this asset, you can just keep the default name as well. After which we wanna go back to our pipeline asset. We'll then select our 2D renderer and drag it into the renderer list. There's then just one more thing that we need to do to set up the Universal Render Pipeline. We have to go to our project settings and select graphics, after which we'll grab our pipeline asset and drag it into the scriptable render pipeline settings. Now when you do this, you might notice that some of your materials break. And that's because any objects you have in your scene are still using the default materials. But we need to create Universal Render Pipeline materials. The first material will just be a basic lit material for our wall objects. To create this material you can right click in your project window go to create and then select material I've given this material the name walls and in the inspector we want to select the shader drop down menu go down to universal render pipeline and select lit we then also need to create a material for our sprites so we'll right click in our project window go to create select material I've named the second material sprite mat we then want to go to the shader drop down menu select universal render pipeline then 2d 
then Sprite Lit Default. Once we have these two materials, we need to replace all the materials of the objects in our hierarchy with either our sprite material or our wall material, depending on what the object is. And so for our player object, we want to select both sprite objects and we'll drag the sprite mat into the material field. For our cube or wall objects, we want to drag the wall material into the material field. And for our map, background, we want to set the material to our sprite material. Now at this point we can add a light to our scene and I want the light to be on our player object and so I'll right click on our player object, go down to light, then 2D, and here you can see a bunch of new options for 2D lights. And the light we want to create is a point light 2D. Now with this new object selected, the first setting that will change is the outer radius. We want our outer radius to be just inside our camera's viewport. And so I'm actually going to scale mine down a bit, maybe 11. And the next setting that we need to change is the shadow intensity. I'm actually going to bump it up to 1 so our players are masked. Now you won't be able to see any shadows like I have until you add in a shadow caster component. For this, we'll select our cube object. And all you have to do is click on Add Component and then search Shadow Caster. Once you've added this component to your object, you should then be able to see the shadow in your game view. But if the shadow is not quite the right shape for the object you attach this component to, then you'll need to edit the shape. For this, you can focus in on your object in the scene view, and you should be able to see a white line going around the perimeter of your object. This white line is actually what's creating the shadow, and so to change the shape of this outline, you can click the Edit Shape tool on the Shadow Caster component. This will give you some anchor points that you can move around in your scene. And if you click in the middle of a line, it will add another point. And so you'll just want to make sure that it's the same size and shape of whatever object you're wanting to cast a shadow from. And then to add in the shadows on the other cubes in my scene, I'm actually just going to delete those cubes and then duplicate my first cube and move it around. Now in future videos, when we build our scene, all you'll have to do is build your walls out of these cubes. And so to show you what I mean, I'm going to add another light to our scene, but this time it's going to be a global light. And then I can just select my cubes, reposition them to where I want them to be, and then press T on the keyboard to get the Rect tool, and I can grab the anchors and just resize them to the same size as my walls. I can then duplicate it. And so there I have the entire med bay walled off. And to keep things nice and clean, I could create an empty game object, center it in my scene, rename it to walls, and then select all of our cubes and add them to this object as children. And then disable the global light and test our project one more time. And there we go. Now that's everything that we're going to cover in this bonus lesson on how to use the new 2D lighting system of the Universal Render Pipeline. If you like this video, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And subscribe to our channel so you can be up to date with all our latest videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.